Hello, hello, and welcome to the Late Night Double Feature Picture Show. Today, we are discussing Bullet Train, a Brad Pitt vehicle, so to speak. Um, so, uh, this film, I don't think I had a, a ton of expectations uh, about this. I know that the um, critics were kind of split on it, uh, and I know that uh, the fans uh, seem to really enjoy it. So I kind of went into it um, not expecting a, a whole lot, um, but uh, it looked interesting enough and I decided to give it a go. So uh, the movie runs uh, two hours and six minutes. Uh, and, um, <clears throat> you know, right off the top, I will tell you that this is uh, what I like to call a big, dumb fun. Uh, you're not, you're not going to get a lot of in-depth, uh, characterizations, not a big story arc for these people. Um, it's a, it's a ton of, uh, action sequences, it's fights, it's sword fights, it's gunplay, uh, it's, it's pretty violent in parts, um, uh, it's pretty gory in parts, actually, uh, uh, but it's also funny at times, um, <clears throat> so... The basic idea of the film is uh, that Brad Pitt is a uh, operative, and it seems that when we join the film that uh, that Brad Pitt um, has been an operative in the past and has been involved in some um, some operations that have you know caused a lot of mayhem, a lot of death, a lot of injuries, mutilation, that kind of thing. <clears throat> and he's kind of reevaluating his life, and and I, I, you get the impression that he's been away from the business for a while. Uh, and that he's looking to ease his way back in, and that this job is supposed to be, uh, you know, a, an easier one. So it's basically a snatch and grab, right? He's to get on this bullet train, uh, which is in leaving Tokyo, uh, grab a briefcase, uh, get off at the next stop, and that's it. That's what he's supposed to do. That's the whole thing. Um, <clears throat> so the bullet train uh, is, I believe, 10 passenger cars long, I think six economy and four first class. Um, so, uh, he gets on the train and, uh, is basically heading to go look for this case. He doesn't know where it is on the train. <clears throat> uh, at the same time, we come across a couple other characters on the train. There are these two gentlemen, uh, a white man and an African-American man, who are together. Um, and uh, uh, they seem, from the get-go, to be, like, up to, to no good. Uh, the way they're talking to each other, one of the gentlemen has some blood on his shirt that isn't his own. And there's a whole conversation about that. Um, so, you know, right away, you know that these two guys are not just regular passengers on the train. And it turns out uh, that um, they have uh, code names. Uh, they are uh, Tangerine and Lemon. The uh, white gentleman is Tangerine. The African-American gentleman is Lemon. And uh, clearly they're on the train for a reason, but it's not um, immediately evident why. Uh, also, I forgot to mention Brad Pitt, uh, in his role as an operative, uh, also has a code name. His code name is Ladybug, which uh, kind of is like a funny scene. His handler who's on the phone with him, informs him that his handle is Ladybug. And he's like, Ladybug? And she's like, uh, yeah, is, is that okay? And he's like, I'm not sure I like it. And she's like, oh. And he, he says to her, do you like it? And she says, yeah. And he says, okay. Um, so uh, Brad Pitt's character believes that he's got, kind of besieged by bad luck. Uh, hence the things that have gone wrong on these previous missions that he's been on. So the whole idea that ladybug, ladybugs are lucky um, is uh, supposedly uh, why he has the nickname, why they're giving him that oper operative name. <clears throat> so uh, ultimately we find out that uh, Tangerine and Lemon um, are have a uh, young man with them. He's, he's been um, doped, but he comes to. And we begin to realize that uh, Tangerine and Lemon um, had to get this guy back. He had been kidnapped. Um, so they are returning him. And there's a kind of flashback scene where you see them kind of like, I think, killing 16 or 17 men to get this uh, this guy back. 
<clears throat> so, uh, so they are transporting the son back to his father. And uh, we also learn that they are the ones who are in ownership of the briefcase that um, Ladybug, Brad Pitt, is supposed to get a hold of. Uh, interestingly enough, they don't have the briefcase with them. <clears throat> They've kind of put it in this communal luggage area. So, uh, so that's why they're on the train. Uh, we also are following a character who, um, <clears throat> in the beginning of the very beginning of the film, we see a Japanese man uh, at the bedside of his son. His son is obviously in, in uh, you know, very poor condition. He's, uh, you know, hooked up to monitors and, and in a bad way. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> uh, it turns out that his son was uh, pushed from a roof, and this is how he sustained his injuries. Um, the father, uh, this Japanese gentleman, uh, gets some information that the person who pushed his son from the roof is going to be on this bullet train. So, uh, so we have Brad Pitt's character, uh, Ladybug. We have the two characters, uh, Tangerine and Lemon, uh, and the son that they're returning to their father. And we have this Japanese gentleman who is <clears throat> basically on the train to, um, to seek some revenge uh, on the person who, uh, who uh, pushed his son off the, uh, off the roof. Um, ultimately, he uh, goes to the seat that he was uh, sent to uh, and finds, instead of uh, somebody there that he was expecting, a, a young girl. Uh, and he's apologizing to her, and she stun guns him. Uh, and it turns out that this is indeed this, this young lady, who turns out to have her own name, uh, The Prince, even though she's a woman. Her name is The Prince, or her code name, or nickname. <clears throat> She stun guns him, and it turns out that she is, in fact, the person who, who pushed um, uh, his son off the roof. Um, so we have this cast of characters, right? We have Ladybug, who's there to steal a briefcase. The briefcase is in the possession of uh, Lemon and Tangerine, who have the son and the briefcase, although the briefcase is not physically on them. Uh, we have uh, the Japanese gentleman whose son has been injured, and we have um, the woman who is responsible for this. And it turns out that she has lured him onto the train, uh, pushed his son off the roof, and lured him onto the train by revealing who she was because she was trying to get to his boss. And this is where the story starts to take a little bit of a turn because we start to realize that both Tangerine and Lemon were hired by somebody called the White Death. The White Death is also the person that this young lady is trying to get to, hence pushing the child off the roof and utilizing this Japanese man because this Japanese man is in the employ of the White Death. Um, so uh, little by little, it becomes apparent that uh, a lot of these shady characters who are on the train all have this loose connection to the White Death. Uh, a couple other characters show up during the course of the film. We see a, uh, a brief um, flashback where we see a character called the Wolf uh, who's in Mexico and seems to be like a, a rising guy in the cartels. <clears throat> he uh, meets a woman, and on his wedding day, uh, everybody at the uh, wedding party is uh, poisoned, and basically they all bleed out, bleeding from their eyes, bleeding from their ears, out of all their orifices, uh, and it turns out that, um, that uh, an assassination attempt was made on one guest at the wedding, but to assure that they got him, the assassin was willing to kind of murder everybody there. So this wolf is looking to extract revenge for the death of his wife, and he gets information that this person is on the bullet train. Um, so uh, a lot of moving parts. Uh, a lot of people on the train uh, with either um, missions to accomplish or uh, revenge to be sought, uh, looking to kill or get to uh, the white death. So um, Brad Pitt eventually uh, finds his way to um, the briefcase, uh, gets it in his hands and thinks to himself, okay, this was pretty simple. Uh, I'm on the train. Uh, the train um, makes stops at a number of stations and the train only stops at those stations for 60 seconds. Um, so he is on the train, he has the briefcase, he just needs now to get off the next stop and his job is done. Um, he thinks that he understands that uh, what is in the in the briefcase is money. Uh, so um, 
so all that being said, uh, a lot of characters interacting with each other. Brad Pitt has the briefcase he's looking to get off. So um, ultimately, uh, what this turns into is basically little by little, these characters uh, start to become aware of each other being on the train, aware that uh, they each have competing reasons for being on the train, which makes them enemies, which just basically turns the movie into like, one fight sequence uh, after another. Uh, as I said earlier, there are knife fights and sword fights and fist fights, and uh, all the while there's some comedic undertones to this whole thing. So uh, a lot of action going on in the film, and, and little by little, these pieces of these characters are uh, revealed and you understand more and more their connection to um, this white death character. Uh, ultimately, it turns out that the white death, uh, this kind of, uh, criminal mastermind is behind uh, all of them being on the train for one reason or another. He has his own ideas about what needs to happen to these people. Uh, so um, Brad Pitt in particular in this movie, uh, very, very entertaining. Uh, you know, some of my favorite Brad Pitt performances uh, are when he plays characters who are slightly uh, unaware of what's going on around them. Not not really stupid, but not as with it as, as uh, you would expect uh, the type of character that he's playing to be. And uh, he plays that kind of character in this in this film in particular. It's, it's, uh, it's very entertaining stuff. Um, uh, there's, uh, there's a snake on the train, a venomous snake on the train. Uh, there are other characters coming. There's a character who's called the Elder who shows up on the train. There's a character who is called the Hornet who is on the train, who turns out is kind of hiding in plain sight on the train. Um, most of these characters uh, meet with a, a very, very violent end. Um, I won't go into too much detail about who and what happens because uh, I don't want there to be spoilers. Um, so, and then ultimately, uh, you know, there's this final confrontation, uh, between the surviving characters and the White Death, and you find out even more is revealed, uh, about their connections and why the White Death has set them up and, and, you know, um, why they're all there. So, uh, you know, again, you know, back to what I said in the beginning, um, this is a, a film that I think falls into the category that I would call big, dumb, fun. If you're looking for character study, if you're looking for in-depth, you know, understanding of the motivations of, uh, of people and their character arcs and those things, you're not going to get that from this film. On the other hand, if you're looking for two hours of, like, blood and violence and funny stuff, uh, you know, along with some, you know, pretty good storytelling. Um, uh, you know, again, not an in-depth uh, look at these people in their lives, but you get enough to understand why they're there and what their motivations are. Um, so, you know, in truth, uh, I loved it, this movie. I, I really did. Um, you know, and, and <clears throat> how you feel about a movie is is really kind of uh, susceptible to, to headspace. So you could be in a certain headspace on a certain day. I might have watched this movie on another day and kind of been dismissive of it. But I watched it today and uh, it aligned with my headspace, with my mood. And uh, I found myself like just smiling and giggling at times and uh, really enjoying the action sequences. Uh, again, not a lot of story arc, right? There's actually a bottle of Fiji water in this film uh, that has a bit more uh, story arc than, um, than some of the characters. Uh, I would say the film is a is a mashup of uh, Robert Rodriguez, Quentin Tarantino, and some anime is is the best thing I can compare it to. Um, but uh, you know, again, if you're if you're a fan of action films, if you don't mind some kind of mindless violence, and as I said, it does get gory at times. Uh, I would say that this is a this is a uh, there are worse ways to spend two hours of your life. Uh, really enjoyed it. I, I, I will probably be purchasing it on physical media in the future. Uh, again, uh, there, I left out a lot of uh, uh, plot points because I didn't want to ruin it for anybody. So there's uh, there's more. There's a lot more to the story than what I just kind of went over. Uh, but again, uh, a lot of fun, and I, I really did enjoy it. So um, if I were to grade this film from a, a, a to, to F um, grading scale, I would give this film a solid plus <clears throat> plus uh, there's a couple of 
big time faces that will eventually show up in this film that you don't expect them to and they're not big parts but i don't want to ruin that for anybody either so um keep an eye out for them too so bullet train uh i enjoyed it a lot more than i thought i would uh so if you've come across this video and you enjoyed this video please give it a life <laughs> got a life a like um give uh give the channel a subscription if you would i'd really appreciate that and until next time, thank you for joining me uh, at the Late Night Double Feature Picture Show. Until next time, be good.